So this is potentially three different <laughs> podcasts yes. with one guest, if we could call Jack that at this point. Yeah, moment. I know. <laughs> this, is, this, is a, this is a pretty sketchy guest. <laughs> exactly. This is, this is the most reluctant guest I've ever had in like a couple hundred episodes. Like, fuck this. I hate these headphones. I quit. I don't want to do this. Why are we doing this? There's blue light. These EMS. Even though there's no blue light, it's all red. <laughs> It uh, could fuck be. it, it's blue light. <laughs> yeah, there couldn't it's be any less blue, blue light. light. The motherfucker is bright <laughs> red in this room. Jack, can you start by saying what the heck you mean when you say this is low volt Jack? Yeah, well, it's kind of funny. I gave a talk today to Neil Strauss's society, and uh, I would say probably three quarters of the way in, I started feeling kind of funny in the room. Mm. And um, I think it was the lighting in the room. And I kept commenting to a lot of people in the room that I thought the room really had suboptimal lighting. And we actually had the Juve light on, you know, when I was up on the stage. But I can tell you that after that, didn't work too good. And um, we, Brian actually took me out to the pool. We went to the pool, the hot tub. I actually felt better out there. Mm -hmm. When I came out of the pool, out of the sun, um, Back into the area, like actually when I met you, I started feeling the same feeling again. Yeah. Like I just was not – it was an indoor kind of scene. So I wasn't feeling it. And I, I don't know – I know it's something in the environment. That I can tell you. I can't put my finger on exactly what it is. But something – something's unusual. Yeah. Are you able to describe – like or explain or any of you guys, both Matt or I mean Luke probably as well. All of you guys are like pretty savvy on this stuff more than I am, I'd say. Um, our relationship to electricity, like I think it's fascinating that like we are electrical beings and we're interacting with the electricity around us. To me, that's like a foreign idea in a way. Well, but it's not that foreign because I mean, if you think about it, everything about us is a DC electric current. I mean, that's what runs in you. Right? I mean, when you're awake, the DC electric current is pulsing in you. We can actually measure it. When you go to sleep, it goes away. So I would tell you that the relationship I think that you were trying to get to is the one that's into that wall. Mm. That's a bad relationship. Mm. That's like a really bad low dopamine relationship. <laughs> the one that we have Cody with the sun. And all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like really fucked up. <laughs> It, and that's and that's the truth. It's, I have a codependent it, relationship <laughs> with the power grid. Oh, yeah. Well, you do get Seriously. codependent in a sense because it's it actually ends up stimulating the whole like dopaminergic well, system, and you end up kind of creating it, like a codependence on it, right? Well, it it does because actually it creates a low dopamine state, and then you're going in for the kill. And right now with me, I just don't feel like it's unusual because I'm usually pretty pretty sharp, and I'm feeling more goofy right now. Oh, good. <laughs> it's just as bizarre. It's just a bizarre situation. <laughs> That's good. Well, it's a perfect time to record then because you have three young fucking knuckleheads. Well, two yep. younger, it's and true. I'm I'm catching up with you. But it's good. <laughs> we like we we get we get Jack Cruz like when his defenses are down, and we're yeah. gonna get more realness. Yeah, if you can imagine, like it's not hard to get realness from Jack Cruz, but if he's tired, maybe we're gonna get like Dude, the I real realness. I love being forced into situations. Like before I go into it, I hate it because I think it's terrible. But when I'm tired or you know effed up in whatever variety that is, almost a hundred percent of the time I get a better version of myself because I don't have the guards up. You know, so when if I go into a thing and I'm you know like in this situation right now, I'm just like oh fuck it. From that perspective, I feel like that's actually a better Because you don't have enough energy to put up the fight to, like, look yeah. and sound cool and make yeah. everything. Like, perfectionism is not an option when you're fatigued. Yeah, but see, you know, when I do a podcast, i got to be honest with you guys, because I've done podcasts with lots of people. I don't, I don't uh, uh, approach it like that. I actually approach it like whatever you ask me, that's where we're going to go. You know what I mean? And then when we're going to go, we just go. And I, this is different, though. This is this one is totally <laughs> different. That's all I'm gonna tell you. I, I I've never felt like this before when I've done a podcast. Let me yeah. ask you something, and we alluded to this a little bit last night because I'm really into you know the concept behind the biology of belief, and that if I'm super paranoid about what I eat and all orthorexic and the lighting and the fucking EMFs, like 
isn't the paranoia because that's where I go with it. I, I have a hard time forgetting about the fact that I'm in this field and I live here. I'm not, I don't have the option really to move. There's consequences to it. So I find, have you ever seen the movie Goodfellas? No. All right. Well, there's a scene in it where Ray Liotta is really high on coke. He's a mobster and the, the feds are after him and they're flying around with these black helicopters and he's looking out the window and he's all high on coke and he always sees the helicopters even when they're not there. That's how I am with Wi-Fi and chemtrails totally. and all this shit. It makes me neurotic and afraid and I can feel myself tensing up and then I have the realization that perhaps all of the fear and the neurosis about what I'm eating and when I'm eating and the EMFs and all this is worse for me than just going, ah, oh, fuck it. It is what it is right now. See, I'll I move th- when I, I think can. That, I think that's a manifestation, though. Look, we talked about this last night when we did your podcast. It's a manifestation of the dopamine effect. See, I, that doesn't uh, uh, for, uh, it doesn't scare me. I'm not worried about any of those things. Okay. And the reason why is I think we have an incredible adaptability inside of us. Um, unless your redox is completely trashed, that's when you're going to get in trouble. But my, I know my redox is not trashed. Even though like I'm feeling like low do, uh, voltage jack tonight, I think I'm more introspective right now. That's what I'm, I think hmm. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, okay. I think, I think that I'm thinking about other things that have got me – on a different track but the, those things don't scare me i told you last night 5g yeah. doesn't scare me um all the stuff that i said today in neil's event they don't scare me i think i think they're all i can deal with all of them i can teach people how to deal with all of them the thing is are you ready to do some of the things that you have to do and you and i talked about this in the hot tub today i said luke kind of what we talked about last night and what we talked about today i said i hope this leads to a different channel like where we're gonna go and what we're gonna talk about because i don't want people i really you know i appreciate that you telling people this right now on social media i don't want them to be afraid i really don't i i think it's a waste of energy to be quite honest with you and i think in a 5g city in a 5g world you don't have energy to waste you, you can't piss it away. So um, we got ourselves into this mix. I think we can get ourselves out of the mix. Have you guys, have you guys heard of, uh, I think you guys called Mr. White, and he had like a grapefruit-sized tumor. It was in 19, I, think, I believe it was 1965. I was reading this in a time, New York Times article. You guys can look it up, um, or people listening can look it up. Um, so guys, they call him Mr. White, 1965, grapefruit-sized uh, tumor. And then they found this serum it was like some horse serum that they they thought could cure the cancer they inject the guy with it and then he ends up like rapidly healing tumor goes away the whole thing he heals himself it's great and then he finds out two months later they're like oh that serum it was actually bullshit like we messed up and all of a sudden like tumor starts coming back in and then they flip flop back and forth like this eventually the guy died but he ends up re-healing again because they got a new medicine and it's just like it's activating his own internal healing response it's called, uh, what is it called? Psycho neuroendocrine immunology. It's yeah. like a long, unnecessary term, uh-huh. term for it. That's actually what the biology belief really is. Yeah, That's Bruce Lipton, yeah. And, and it's the same thing tied to actually, if you believe in it and it happens, it's actually real. Right. Uh, Luke and exactly. I talked about that the other day. And I'm, I'm like, look, I believe that's operational, but do I believe – that the 5G effect, can you believe it away? No, I think it's I, both. I, I, I don't think you can believe it away. I want to believe it away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can't we believe it, yeah. we'll believe it away, Jack? Can't fucking wear it. <laughs> it's funny. I heard all of you guys in each other's podcasts, and I'm just sitting here like as if I'm actually just driving in my car listening. No, you're on the podcast, podcast man. You're on the podcast. <laughs> Do something so amazing, so man. What I'm this might even, be, this might even be your podcast I as think the it host. is going to be. I know. And I got to say something. So. He's like, wait, I'm – on my own fucking <laughs> podcast right now. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> so I think it's possible maybe that the feelings that you're having constantly, at least I've experienced this in my own experience, is that, Can oh, Jack just put on the Whoa, headphones. Jack's coming Whoa. in. Big coming time. In. Big time now. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, shit. So maybe that feeling you're always feeling is the stimulus that is supposed to be there because you know that, based on everything you've mm. learned, that what you're doing is not good. I, I and agree you with that. should probably listen to that stimulus. And until either you're going to just deny reality and then 
Like, if you truly believe that 5G is going to be harmful to you, you have two options. You can either change your belief and maybe deny reality if there's enough evidence saying that it is going to be bad, or you can just ignore it and continue to move on, or you can actually change your environment. So you pretty much have three options. But um, Or a combination. Or a fourth, you can say fuck it. Or a yeah. combination of three. You have a combination, but the point that I'm kind of getting to is, is that maybe that uncomfort discomfort you're feeling is basically telling you like you need to do something about this and if you don't do something about it and you just try to kind of chill with it but it keeps coming back and you just try to chill again and it keeps coming back and you just repeat this cycle maybe you need to just make the decision like i'm just going to fully accept the risk and just stay here or i'm actually going to move but if you're just in indecision constantly, yeah, it's good. If it keeps coming back, that's saying something to you. Like maybe it's <laughs> something that you should listen to. You just gave me the advice that I give the advice to all of my, um, you know, um, mentees. I guess you could say when yeah. they call me with the problem, I say, "Man, you got three choices: accept it, reject it, or change it." And most of the time, changing it involves changing another person because that's where most of our problems arise. And so you changing either changing another have person. Well, you know, if you're in a situation with work, you have a problem. A guy call me, ah, oh, my fucking wife, my boss, whatever. I say, well, can you change the situation? Can you communicate? Can you alter it to your liking to make it more agreeable to you? And in most cases, if it involves relationships, you can't really change people. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So with the 5G, I can't fucking change it. So I could make a decision. Well, I'm going to mitigate. I'm going to make changes in my behavior or changes to where I live or just surrender to this is the way it is and I'm just going to be happy and fucking free. And if I end up getting cancer because of this shit, it is what it is. Exactly. Well, you can always get the horse serum. Yeah. As long as you believe it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it's accept it, <laughs> accept it, change it, or reject exactly. it. Exactly, that's, that's Reject what I was and rejecting at. it is is a more extreme version of rejecting is like I'm moving to fucking where Jack says Pensacola, Florida, whatever the fuck. I'm getting where there's no Rich. 5G anywhere around. I'm going to live in the middle of the woods uh -huh. where there's only trees. Gotcha. That would be rejecting the problem to the to the best of my ability. So you're uh -huh. you're giving me my own advice, which is good advice. Uh huh. Yeah, I th I think so. I mean. It, it seems like it. you have this piece of knowledge, and I've had this many times, and I've thought through it a lot because I try to think logically, but I don't know how well it goes all the time, but you have the piece of information, and the question is, what do you do with it? So, It's like if I'm sitting really close to a wall, right, and there's an electrical field coming out of the wall, because I know that field comes out about six feet probably, depending on how dirty the electricity is, it's like... If I didn't know the fucking wall was there, it's probably healthier than me going, oh, my God, I'm being irradiated by the electrical field in that yeah. wall. Like knowing that the field's doing it and having negativity and fear about it exactly. is worse than just being exposed to the field. But what if you just based on that, you decide to actually change and you do move from the field. So is it possible that that outcome, even though there was an initial stress, it was the catalyst to a superior result? Do you want to do both? Yeah, that's, a, that's what I do. So, like, if you didn't but know, you know what's funny great, too is I once you do know, you sh maybe it is better that you do change. I also have been in trouble in relationships with other people. Like, a girlfriend is sitting next to one of those the fucking temperature control things that puts off a shitload of EMF, and they're sitting against the wall with their head on that thing, and I'm just sitting there going, "Don't say anything, Luke. Don't be annoying. Don't be controlling." And I just, just dump her. I just <laughs> and I just <laughs> I can't I resist. I just can't resist, and finally I'm like, I'm sorry, you got to move away from that thing. You're bl you're like irradiating your head right now. And some of them are like, Oh my god, thank you. You're so smart. You're a genius. Biohacker, awesome. Love you. And some are like, Stop trying to control me, man. So what are the actual things in this hotel room that we that we could potentially optimize the room with? Like, what are the standout oh, low dude, hanging come fruit? On, bro, this is <laughs> well. Tell people this is <laughs> this is like the biggest toxic soup you could ever imagine. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, get that. Look, I mean, just look at in front of you. You got all the stuff you guys were fucking around with to begin with. It's now plugged into the that's the wall. worst. Really, the worst. I'm not part kidding. Is you. That we plugged, plugged into, into the, the wall. wall. You're plugged into hmm. L.A. dirty electricity. All and, of and we're in a 5G Coast. city now. Yeah. So, Aaron, you know, you said something earlier. When I first met you, like, no, Jack, I'm feeling great here and this and that. Dude, I think that's awesome. It tells me your redox is great. But dude, what you just did when you plugged that in, and I, that's the reason I had these off my neck. Yeah. I'm sitting here and I'm going, thank God I'm leaving tomorrow at 9 a.m. That's mm. the, the first thing that came to my head. And I'm, I'm being honest with you when I say that because jump conduction is going on. That, that electrical plasma that's right outside the, the door here, yeah. that's for real, dude. And the thing is, we're getting some of it right now. All of us are getting it 
in our head. Like Luke just said, his girlfriend is putting her head on the thing that's a radiator. I feel like I'm doing the same thing with this thing. You know, I'm like, it, I, I hate this. I don't know how you guys do this in podcasting. Because I've seen you guys with this stuff on your head. I could not do this. I just. And what is that actually doing at a cellular level? Well, good question. Because people you, listening to this, they don't even know what we're talking about. No, yeah, and I, and what is redox as well? Because I'm I'm sure very. All right, people redox know that is, is simple. It's the net negative charge in the cell. So, for example, if you look at cytochrome one and oxygen, it should be negative 400 millivolts. That's normal when you're healthy. We can tolerate what what I call healthy aging or healthy living is from about negative 200 to negative 400. When you go below negative 200, you're toast. Mm. You're not, you're not in good shape. So the key thing is, with all these things that we're doing, to do this podcast, um, the effect, I think, is pretty great. Matt's measuring it right now, which I think is a pretty cool thing because I think you guys need to know this because you know what? Yeah. I don't do this. I, when you guys call me up, I don't have all this shit on. Right. You know, I have my shitty headphones that drive you guys crazy. I tune yeah. through. Yeah. You know, this is going to be the best audio <laughs> quality <laughs> ever. Let me tell you, every with podcast Chad. that records with you is probably like, oh, fuck, he doesn't have a mic. Right. And I don't do And they sound like shit. Right. <laughs> but the information's good. So the you're like, fuck, right. it's Jack Cruz. I'll take one for the team. Right. And there's I, good information. But, but the thing that I want to tell you guys, I do that because I personally, I, I, it's like where I value the things. I value... I don't want any of this stuff plugged in yeah, to the power grid. Right. I really don't. And I don't care if it sounds bad. I mean, that people watching this right now may be totally pissed off about what I'm saying right now. But, look, you're getting this information, as far as I'm concerned, for free. You should thank God that you're getting it. You know, I know you guys feel differently about this because it's your podcast. It's your show. You want it to sound great. I get it. But dude, I'm not willing to sit around with that thing. But wh- into but the why wall. specifically? Yeah. Like what? Like at a cellular level? Like what the heck is happening? That's that's a bummer. Well, you're changing the, the amount of calcium in your cell. You're changing the free radical signal. You're changing all the damage that's possible, and you're increasing the risk. The plus, the problem is, we're in a 5G city. Like right yeah. now, jump conduction could be going on. We don't know it. That's why Matt was measuring it to see if there's any fluctuation that's coming through that line. And here's the crazy part. We could talk for an hour. My meter's not that sensitive. Yeah, but but we could talk for an hour. Everything would be fine. But then all of a sudden, something may happen. And could that be the reason why Jack is low voltage today? To be quite honest with you, I think that's actually what the reason is. Mm. Is there any truth to the whole idea that having a cell phone actually ends up reducing the, uh, the, the bone density? Like you can actually measure. What do you mean? I've heard, so Dave Asprey specifically, he, had, he did a, a thing where he, like, measured the bone density around <coughs> his hip, um, around where the cell phone was at all the time. And mm-hmm. he found that, like, specifically where that was at. I, I, I wonder if this was replicated. I don't know if it actually was. Do you, do you totally. If they, if so the if first time I ever learned about Jack, one of the first things that I ever remember hearing and it stuck with me was he said 80% or, yeah, 80% of people or a huge percentage of people i think you said every single patient you see in my generation mm-hmm. younger people have osteoporosis true. and he talked about how the first cosmonaut who ever went to space was russian and he was in space for 465 days approximately and he lost 80 percent of his bone density and you were making the case that it was because of the lack of gravity and that when people go into hypergravity they gain bone density Jack believes it has more to do with the magnetic field and the way it affects our bone growth mm. related to the – you would have to explain well, the it's, details it's, of it's this. It's the electromagnetic field. The reason why, if anybody's read Becker's book, The Electric Body, yeah, y- you have to know that there's a P and N semiconductor. And the P and N semiconductor – Positive and negative. Right, and that's what it stands for. One is Thanks. appetite <laughs> yeah, and the other one welcome. is collagen. collagen. <laughs> so it turns out in, in Becker's studies that he did, we have two copper atoms that are electrostatically bound – that allow the P appetite and the N collagen to bind. That's actually what makes bone. And when a electromagnetic field comes, it knocks the two copper atoms out. And that's actually why the appetite comes off the collagen. That's what osteoporosis comes from. Hmm. So is it plausible what Dave said? Yes. Just from knocking the collagen out? Yeah, just from, just all you have to do is knock the two copper atoms out and that's it. That's all it takes. Do, is it plausible what Dave told you? Yes. Do I believe Dave? No. I really don't. Um, part of the reason why 
is I've actually done hacks on people that use this. I'm going to tell you the bigger effect is on laptops. If you put laptops on your lap, especially the Apple laptops, that I really think is a problem. They have ridiculous electromagnetic fields. The, the phones, not so much. Um, the newer phones, I think, potentially could be a problem. But do I think all the young kids that are watching this anywhere, they need to be really careful about how and where they put their phones? Yeah, like I'm always worried about the girls putting the phones oh my sure. God. in their it's bra. Crazy. But believe it or not, a lot of people still do it. That's crazy. And I, and the thing that kills me is I always look at people's jeans, and when you see where the phone is worn into the jeans, you kind of like – yeah, it tells you a lot. It seems inevitable that it's going to be the next cigarettes. I think it's already there. Aaron. Oh, it's. I'm going to be worse. honest. I I think. Yeah, I, I think would say with, much worse. With the latest NTP study, uh, I think I think we're so past cigarettes now. It's not even funny. Mm. Yeah. Um. And and I don't think the lay public, <laughs> the guys that you have on on your podcast, they even know that this is the case. I mean, the perception of like back in the, whenever the heck that was the fifties or whatever, it's like the doctors smoking a cigarette in their commercials. Like Mm -hmm. that's what it's like. I think that's where we're at with technology where people are just kind of blind to it. Pretty sure that in the next fill in the blank, 10, 20 years, we'll look back and they'll be like, you had the cell phone on your, you know, fill yeah. your whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's, it's already there when you're starting. To I don't see think we realize it. It's so I, common. Come well, on, everyone's I think, totally I, attached to their I cell phone. I think the reason why people don't realize it, though, it goes back to what Luke was saying before. It's about the dopamine effect. When you're a low dopamine individual, you can't <laughs> pick up on these things. But guess what? On social media now, you can't get on social media and not see all the things out there about blue light and about you know, damage, kids killing themselves. Well, most people actually don't I don't see think that most people social, see that. I think you media. see that because that's what you're tapped into and Internet yeah. smart. So it advertises what it needs to for you. But none of us. Well, you. you I might, mean, I I'm do, sure of both. Course, yeah. Actually, I'm sure but both. Most guys people do, but most people still aren't seeing that on their social media, believe no it or not. I think unless I, they're I looking at your page. I only see it because I'll, I'll, I, I follow one of your homeboys yeah. on um, on Instagram, yeah. and he always posts those red yeah. pictures, and he'll have he'll put like real mainstream news stories, and so I don't read mainstream news because most of it is fake. That's um, Dewey, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah homeboy. Dewey. Jack so I, f- I follow Dewey him, homeboy. and yeah. he and he posts <laughs> real articles. Out, he just posted one a couple days ago that was from <laughs> Women's Beauty or Fashion right. Magazine, and it was talking about how, oh, watch blue light because it fucks your skin yeah, up. Someone, I was like, exactly. that's, that's the target they need to go for that is that people that are concerned. Friends send this shit to me when well, it comes women, up on their Women need to know. So it's occasional yeah. that people yeah. Women see need it. to yeah. know the makeup that they wear actually causes a lot of their problems. Why? Oh, tell us about the makeup. Blocks UV light. Yeah, there you go. Matt, right. Talk to Matt. Well, Matt's got it's it. not good. You know what else is weird about he makeup? Would explain it better than I can. You know well, what else is well, weird about makeup? Lipstick is all full of lead. That's what makes it opaque. Well, you can't use lead paint on the fucking wall, but you can use lead paint on your oh, lips. That's how it's. I don't times. kiss women with lipstick. I'm like, can you wipe that off? Yeah, I'm not strange. into getting more lead in my body. Thank you. That's so interesting. Yeah, maybe well, that's why I mean, I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, makeup is one of those things. Like, you know, true. personal <laughs> care products. You you know right. you you got finished talking today about personal care and personal health. We don't even think about these little things that make a difference. Like people ask us today on the stage, hey, do you guys use deodorant? And we all looked at each other. I don't. I haven't used deodorant in probably 10 years. Oh, not like store deodorant. I, use I don't use any oils. deodorant. None. Zero. Well, he's been married for 25 years. <laughs> So well, I got to say, some people are funkier than others. Uh, I'm, some, not, I'm not funky, though. You, I haven't smelled any B.O. on no. you. So Could there be doing any working? electrical effect on the smell that you, you oh, end yeah, up putting absolutely. out? Absolutely. Smell is an electromagnetic phenomenon. In fact, all the senses are electromagnetic phenomenon. The cool thing about smell, we're actually, and, and believe it or not, men not so much, but women are. They're attracted to certain men's smell. You know the reason why? Immune system. Exactly. Completely immune. You're looking for a dissimilar immune system to bond with, yeah. to for have an offspring. Being. So yeah. that actually is an electromagnetic phenomenon. Interesting. So, so when you think about that, I mean, it brings to the level. If you think you're in L.A., well, if, if you are have a high electroconductivity outside, how good is your picker going to be if you're a chick? And if you happen to meet this person, say, in a bar at late at night and it's blue light, can you see how this could be a problem? Like how people get mismatched. The reason I bring this up, 
but you guys know the data. I don't have to recapitulate it. 50% of people that get married wind up getting divorced. But I think the more impressive thing is you guys, all three of you are way younger than I am. Luke, not so much, but still younger than me. And he's single. I would tell you, I would not want to be a single man in today's world. I think it's much more difficult for you guys to have to navigate this because of the electromagnetic pollution that's out there. I really, truly believe this. And the reason why is the signals between two people, unless you're together. And Luke and I talked about this today. When you physically meet somebody the first time uh, live, you get a sense, a better sense of them than you do from the Internet. That, that sense is extremely important. Yep. So if it happens that you meet that person, say, in an environment that's not conductive to either you or to them, are you getting a true sense? You know, which brings an interesting topic. Where you meet people actually may make a big deal in a 5G world or a blue lit world. And I think that's kind of a really interesting thing. That is interesting. I recently met someone that was quite lovely, and it was uh, out in the country, basically. Right. So I mean, she's Colorado. the girl that wants you to go to the geothermal pools, right? So that's ba- she's a winner, that's dude. Ba- sh- sh- we're on social media live right now, Jack. Don't embarrass me. Fuck. <laughs> that's cool, that's good. Play it cool, man. Play it cool. I'm just saying. Met someone quite nice young lady and it was out in nature in, in the country so Ricardo Sagrado right at the Sh- event shut will you <laughs> Jesus <laughs> oh, <laughs> never mind <laughs> changing changing <laughs> subjects okay <laughs> Jesus <laughs> how, how about this one I'm gonna totally just divert this shit I guess you want me to go alright let's direction. go back to the I brought body it electric. upon myself okay but how about when a woman's on I'm birth control no, this shit when I, they're on I, birth control no, no, I agree and then it scrambles their signals of mate selection and they select the wrong That's guy because like their hormones are scrambled everyone in my generation not everyone but like Brian 50% of girls in our 75% of girls in our cohort like who's gonna be healthy to have children with honestly I'll f- well, like the little Mayan girls this, down in Plato Carmen. <laughs> when when you guys when you guys talk about this, uh, I would just tell you I'm going to bring it right back to the doctoring. Fertility doctors are printing money right now, so when you see them printing money, you have to say to yourself, "What's going on with our society?" Before, but young men like you guys were, you were worried about impregnating women when you went on on dates. Now you don't have to worry about that. You can pretty much bang whoever you want, and guess what happens? You don't have to worry about getting pregnant anymore. And when I grew up, that was a huge, big deal. And the point, the, the reason I say this, you guys laugh. I'm actually really trying to make a, a strong point here. Back in the old times, when you read old Becker's work, he talked about, the soldiers would go out and oh stand in front of gosh. the antennas and radiate their genitals it's with true. radar oh, wow. so they would not have kids. And what I'm trying to tell they you guys is when they'd go out on the town, they would put their nuts up to the damn. radar machines Serious. on Hawaii, on and the islands, because they knew they couldn't, they book, couldn't impregnate the girls, Aaron, it goes but they could have sex without It goes condoms. straight to For real. point about the body Asprey electric, putting it's that in his pocket. Seriously. Yeah, right. Wow. To me, you're worried about your bones? Dude, I'm worried about your bones. I have my phone on air. <laughs> I'm worried so about your bones. So I, <laughs> that's so the real thing. <laughs> so is that a relevant thing? That's I have my phone it on is airplane, a mode, thing. airplane mode all the time, but unless, I'm using, unless I'm using it. It doesn't matter in a 5G world because guess what? I told people today, you weren't there. Mm-mm. 5G jump conducts to insulators and conductors. So if you have an insulator and a conductor in your pocket, what are you effectively doing? Mm. You're changing the electric and magnetic field there. So you know when you go through like TSA and they tell you, put your hands up. If you don't opt out, take all shit out of your pockets. I'm telling you the same thing. I don't want you to have anything in your pockets. I'm even to the point now where I'm rethinking the belts that I wear yep. when I go to a certain city. Like, I just literally bought belts that have no metal in them. They have a plastic buckle, and they're made out of rubber. So, like, even a little notepad <laughs> with, like, a twirly metal binder here might not be Right. You, you need to be optimal. careful about what you're putting in your pockets now. So you're talking about so jump conducting. So if we have this 5G uh, field going on in a city and you have metal in your body or on your body, like Mm. a friend of mine has a big titanium shoulder I'm worried about your ears. I was actually looking at your ears today. Uh, Not my gold earrings, bro. Dude, I was was actually in the hot tub looking, and I was going to say something (laughs) to you. Oh, fuck. Now I'm going to be paranoid. (laughs) Well, I'm not saying it to make you paranoid, but – 
the point that I'm trying to say to you is you need to think about that. Like, now if you, you look know. at my old pictures, I used to wear this really gnarly cross, um, and it was made from one of my patient's pedicle screws. I used to tell the story all the time. This is a guy that meant a lot to me, a patient, and I had his screws melted down and put the net, the collar on my neck to be like penance, like Jacob Marley. That's kind of how I was going with it. And fo I found out that in Nashville when I did this, that it was causing me a problem because the, the metal was so conductive. So is it essentially turned into an antenna it where does. now it's yeah. attracting the fields in your environment? It so does. even if your phone's on airplane and it's not sending That's and receiving. That's why I said that to Aaron. I want mm. him to understand Damn. that the it's environment antenna, has changed yeah. so much that the things that you didn't think were a problem before, we actually do have to worry about. I, I'm even worried about, you know, you guys have seen me post about aura rings and Fitbits, and you now know the reason why I feel the way I do about these things. I'm telling you, the risk is even greater. Damn. So I'm talking about girls that have piercings, guys that have earrings. Tattoos with metal in tattoos them? Tattoos with metals in them. Do like you, all and, tattoos. And the data, hmm, the data on that comes – directly from MRIs. I'm just, I'm floored because I've had this Prince Albert now for 25 <laughs> years. And it's, I mean, it's been a big hit. And Welcome I, to Jamaica, man. <laughs> what, can you explain uh, what exactly is that jump is? Like well, what I mean, the like? best way to describe it, I mean, just look at it like this. If you had a wire right here yeah. and all the air around us, people don't consider air conductive, but it is. The atmosphere is conductive. Hmm. So if you have more electric magnetic radiation here, 5G is able to jump from the air directly to this wire. So say if this wire, and, and, and Aaron wasn't here earlier today. We had a really nice discussion about grounding. All of us on the stage agreed that grounding is a good thing. But I said to Luke, I said, grounding in L.A. right now is not probably a good idea. And you would probably appreciate hearing this. One of my members uh, and I posted probably six or seven months ago when they turned 5G on in New York City. There was three reports of people getting electrocuted from putting their hand on a lamppost or stamping on a manhole cover. Hmm. And the reason for that is because the connoisseurs and wires were in the ground. They jump conducted on there. The conduction went to the manhole cover and the people died. So what oh, they actually died, they died electrocuted? Not just yeah. like, oh, that hurts. Yeah. Well, well I, have, I have another example. Wow. For example, I was using Ethernet to avoid getting uh, Wi-Fi exposure. This is a different example than the other one, Luke, that I've told you, oh. where I had an electric field on my computer, but this was at a, in a different case. So the first case I'm referring to is I was using Ethernet, trying to reduce Wi-Fi exposure, measured the electric field on the surface of my computer keyboard as per the recommendation of a friend who's sensitive to the electrical fields and so on, and the electrical field on the surface of the computer was very high, like extremely high, 400 volts per meter. That's crazy. Um, which means that the electrical system in the house was jumping onto the Wi-Fi router that I had turned off so there was no Wi-Fi being emitted. But the electricity was going through there onto my cable onto the middle of my computer. So that's not exactly wireless conduction, but that's one example. The next was a separate case, and this is just using my meter. Now, this wasn't with electrical fields. This time, the radio frequencies, because this was at my house in Philadelphia where I'm from, where I wasn't going to turn off the Wi-Fi because my family wants to use it, but I was using Ethernet, so I didn't have to be blasting out to the router with my computer, right? And the radio frequencies from the Wi-Fi router jumped onto the Ethernet cable, so I put the, the radio frequency measurement of the meter onto the cable, and the cable itself became a big antenna for the Wi-Fi. Wow. Now, again, this wasn't wireless. This was wired Let's to see. the router, but still the thing is this could potentially this, happen wirelessly. This is, this is what you guys, especially you two, because you're both in L.A., that's why I'm concerned. He's more sensitive to it. You're clearly not from what you told me downstairs. Well, I live in – I live, like, pretty much on the beach in Santa Monica. So I'm, I'm able to, to get, like, in the ocean quite regularly. Right, but I you, you, said, you said you're doing well here. What, what I'm telling you, my advice to you is for about the next 12 to 18 months, you really need to pay attention to the current events going around you. Why? Because I think you're going to start to see – some differences even in people like you t told me your dopamine network is pretty solid pay attention to things that start to change because i believe those things will change and they're going to change in what i call a nonlinear effect you're you're going to have friends that all of a sudden go scree wad one or two days and you're going to be like what just happened think about 
what we're talking about tonight. Because if that happens, they can zap their dopamine level like that. It can also zap their melatonin level. The problem that you're all going to ask me next, well, Jack, how does it affect this system versus that system? The true answer is it's going to depend on the person and what the situation is that they're in. The thing that I want people to be aware of, when these things happen in your environment, do not blow them off. Pay attention to them. That's the key. Well, when you're talking about 5G rolling out in a city, as, as we've discussed in, you know, over the weekend and on, on my episode we did, uh, they're pretending like it's a new thing. Meanwhile, we see the uh, a new thing. the transmitters for, I don't know, the past year or two More, in different yeah. parts of town. Well, they have to Sometimes. test. But Just so you know, they have to test. But before you physically see it on the media, they've been testing two or three years. I told Luke this. You right. need to know this. And this is true. I know because when I came back from a foreign <laughs> exchange program and you had been speaking about this, I started looking, and Brian knows because we're from the same spot, uh, looking up at the telephone poles in suburban Philadelphia, which was not one of the places they were advertising 5G, but of course the distributed antenna system of these cylindrical, spherical, brown, there were brown in my case. Here they're more tan because they're matching them to the tan, grayish telephone poles yeah. but or lamp posts, but there they're doing the brown telephone poles. So they painted them brown to extend out, but they were everywhere. Like on the drive to school, I could point out about 10 of them of the distributed antenna system because once right. they got carte blanche and this is an interesting story the guy who ran ran the fcc the federal communications commission which is supposed to regulate this stuff you'll like this his name's tom wheeler about 15 years prior to being uh in the position where he could authorize 5g without any voting of any kind by congress or the people he was actually the head of the lobbying industry called the cellular telecommunications industry association ctia now known as the wireless industry, he was paid by, or he was head of that, and eventually he was appointed by Obama, and he used his power being appointed by Obama to be head of the FCC to allow 5G to be legalized. The key thing was they opened up the spectrum to go far beyond 6 gigahertz into these really harmful frequencies, now 5G, but the key change was that they allowed for something called the distributed antenna system, which means the placement of small cells on lampposts, telephone poles, cacti, flagpoles, anywhere, everywhere. with anywhere, yeah. on and buildings want, without permits for towers. You guys want to know the crazy part? So they can put Matt's antennas you, anywhere. I love this. Do you know where this came from? Mm. This came from the stimulus package that that Obama got through. That's where your stimulus money got spent. Oh, mm. that's not right. And, and I'm not kidding you when I tell you this. People don't understand how the federal government is so entangled into this. And, you know, th that's why, you know, we had a really deep discussion about politics. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, the people on the right and the people on the left, I think they need to realize they're both getting fucked by the same people. Hmm. And it's about time people start to realize this because Obama started this with the 5G. That's the reason why 5G got fast-tracked through the stimulus package. Then the other thing that he did is he changed analog to digital signal. That gave us all LED TVs. Well, that was the blue light issue. Now we're beginning to see kind of where China is taking incandescence this. illegal. Right. Incandescence gone. You can still buy them for decorative purposes. Right, you but can. But right. the point that I want to make to people is that our elected officials, and, and I'm, not putting, I'm not putting the finger on the politicians because they're going to do what they can get away with. If they can fuck us, they're going to get away with it. But the thing is, we're voting for these fucking idiots. So it's on us. Th that's why podcasts like this are really important. Jack's voltage is going up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. And I, I'm not kidding you. This is something I'm very passionate about. I think people are asleep, Sheeple. both on the East and the West Coast. And I think what Luke said before about this media thing, about how people are going against Trump and this and that, look, both parties are a problem for Americans. And it turns out Trump is a guy that both parties hate. And I'm going to tell you that's kind of also important to pay attention to. I think this whole thing around politics actually is tied to this 5G story. I think they want to make us afraid. I think they want to make us combative to each other. I think that's actually part of the goal. 
Definitely is in the media. The divide and conquer is really obvious. If you don't turn in, tune into it much and you look, you're like, God, all they're talking about is racism and all this stuff. It's like, I don't interact with that in my personal life at all. Mm -hmm. And I don't live in a bubble. I live in a major fucking multicultural city with opportunities for all sorts of weird conflict to go on. And I'm not seeing it. It's like all that shit is on the news and all of the left and right stuff on social media. If you really step back from it. It's the same fucking face with two masks on it. It really is. There's it no is. difference between the left and right say fundamentally. Some would just four white privileged men who don't even well, have fuck the right them. to be talking about this right fuck now. Them. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel the same way Luke, <laughs> I feel the same way Luke does. We're all being manipulated. That's right. the thing. And, and the point is that you have to be awake to this phenomenon because you know what? This is so insidious because when you think about just Aaron plugging that plug in, that's actually all the stuff we're talking about. That's where it all came from. Hmm. And we don't realize where this stuff came from, why we're having to deal with this stuff now and what the collateral effects are of this issue. To me, it's it's really the thing that I think more people need to talk about on a podcast because you know why? It is a little bit uncomfortable. It, it makes you start to realize that maybe – this is all done by design for a reason to try to control us in different ways. So the thing is you have to begin to suspend your belief and actually look deeper into this story before you actually make a decision. Can I ask a st stupid person question Yeah. for me to catch me up? What is the difference between the G's, 4G, 5G, and what's why do we want it's generation? It's called generation, generation, but it's just – the generation of network power, really what it is up until from 0G to 4G, really it's a power density issue. 5G is totally different. 5G is not a real story <coughs> about power density. It's actually about the way the engineers are changing the waveform. The goal for 5G, in case you don't know, is to connect everything like the TV, your mirror, the, your phone, all this shit you have here, you're going to have RFID chips in them. Radio frequency identification. That's what, That's it, what it stands, stands for. for. <laughs> and what that does, it connects everything. So, for example, you can order pizza from your light over here. That's the goal. And they tell people. Not obediently. exactly ordering pizza <laughs> from your life. <laughs> but <laughs> well, it's not that but, far off. But well, yeah, no, you can say, you it's you directionally can talk to, accurate. You, you can like talk to Alexa, talk to Alexa yeah. Yeah. and get right. a pizza order to your house. Yeah. So the point that I'm trying to make to you <laughs> is they're selling this to obedient idiots in cities who basically, like, guys your age, they think, you know, Going online and taking a video of themselves and ordering a shirt is normal. Going to the fucking store now and trying a shirt on is considered revolutionary. Like, oh, I are would you a never fucking do idiot? that. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a that's, waste of time. Right. Yeah. And that's exactly <laughs> the, the, what they're banking on. But here's what you don't realize. The ultimate goal is the more these things become connected, the more they control you. And you don't realize it. Because effectively, they control the choices in the matrix. They control... The selections that you have, they control whether you can like it or dislike it. Mm. They control just about everything in this game. And the thing is, when you're in this matrix, you don't see it. And the thing is, it's really difficult for people who are young, who've grown up in this world. See, it's much easier for me because I know what the world was like from the time I was probably zero to 30. It's a totally different world. And what you guys are growing up in now and what you guys have to face, all the people that are watching this, they don't have my perception. They don't. Matt. Unless they're Matt, old. Yeah, Matt, Matt is 19 years I old. I do. He, yeah, I, right. I remember the phone on the wall that you had to go. Dial. <laughs> right. Exactly. I remember and you had to memorize. You do? My oh, you do? All that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You had to I memorize that, about f you know five or six phone numbers. Yeah. I would go. I would kill for a phone like that. We had that, one you know. like in my house that was just old and it was just kind of there. Yeah, we would actually use it. it was good with, the f with the 5G thing, okay, rolling it out in L.A., so I see those little, those little towers because they're so close together because I guess they're lower power, so they need more of them in line. They're actually versus right. It's actually they're high power, higher power. Oh, it's okay. just that the frequencies don't travel as far. As far, okay. Right. So they need okay. more. So you have to have over. a higher power density to deliver the fast download signals. 
That's so you what can makes it dangerous. The whole movie in one okay, second. right. But here's the thing. So in my neighborhood, they don't have them any. I don't see them anywhere. The only place I see them is in Malibu. So far. No, I've seen. I saw some, and you sent me a picture one time. I think. Of, oh, that was in Beverly there's Hills. Some there's around two there. of them. Yes. I saw two of them yeah. randomly. It's weird. Yeah. Well, they're hidden very well. Yeah. So if they're, you're gonna realize in and they're places in Santa where there's rich I've people, seen them in Santa Monica they're gonna Malibu's. make sure the rich people don't even see them. But in other words, the companies right. are gonna spend the money to do it. To and hide them. Yeah, you're not going to know it. But the, here's the, the insidious part of the story. These meters cost anywhere between fifty and $100,000 a piece. The meters Nobody to detect the millimeter correct. waves. Yeah. The so the problem is you, you have no way of physically protecting or knowing what your problem is unless you have disposable cash to do this. Yeah, well, the meter that we have, the cheaper one, it can tell you if there's a problem because – Usually, where there's a higher frequency being emitted, every antenna I've found so far, it's also emitting the lower frequencies. So unless they make it so that, like, they're phasing out 2G, eventually they'll probably phase out 3G frequencies. They're going to phase out everything. phase out 4G so that you can't pick up, because usually, like I'm saying, these antennas are emitting both. So if there were 5G, you would at least know because there's 4G coming off of it, too, and it gives you an idea. It might not tell you 5G frequencies are there. But you can know there's a problem. And so it's what? Still not so good. so this sounds like a super bleak future. Like, what are people to actually do? <laughs> this is what happens to me, dude. I'm like, where the fuck well, am I gonna? I go? To me, I feel I like I'm painted. I'm like, well, I don't think yeah. it should shoot be myself bleak, or though, Aaron. I really don't think. Well, it should definitely be bleak. don't do that. I okay, think <laughs> that would that would be like the worst. One more thing, I'll throw in. <laughs> that would be I was the just worst. I was just hanging out in Mexico for about two weeks with uh, one of Jack's other members, who I won't share his name if this is gonna be a public podcast, but. He's a big telecom guy. We've mentioned him vaguely here and there. But one thing he mentioned is that even though this 5G current rollout, the distributed antenna system, it's called DAS. That's what this whole antenna is being Those distributed Those little ones all over. all over the place? Yeah, that's the distributed okay. antenna that's system not the called way it's DAS. Be, that's not the way it's Yeah, gonna exactly. Be. He explained that they exactly. can actually hide it even better, so it literally will be invisible. And what they can do is they can make certain antennas so that they can – he was explaining to me any antenna, he, they could change – Right now, like you have a certain antenna of a certain size, it can only emit certain frequencies based on its size right. and wavelengths. But they'll be able to change it so that this much of the antenna emits these wavelengths, this much emits this. So they can have an antenna that emits in all directions, all kinds of wavelengths, and they can disguise it so it's literally the size of a lamppost. Of you'll it's never, actually the base of the lamppost. Know. So this is why he recommends getting away from population as right. much as possible. And that's, that's the which reason. is kind of I'm freaking. overthrowing the motherfucking government. I got to start a revolution. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't deal with this. Well, I <laughs> but actually, by doing this podcast, not, this is not right, man. But guess what? That, that's actually what you guys <laughs> need to be talking about a little bit more on your podcast. Agreed. Because well, guess what? And here and here's the the thing. People need to understand where are the idiots. Government, that I didn't the- say that. Don't shut down my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 I'll get You're disappeared. Like Alex Jones, yeah, they'll dude. Alex Jones me. I'm like, it's I can't verb. talk about vaccines, <laughs> chemtrails, 5G. Alex Jones. I have to talk about green juice oh, no. and what was the What was the porn that yeah, Alex green, Jones was into? Did you guys see that? Oh, yeah. no, I didn't. He was showing, because he shows like his little like blips of his screens, and there was some like freaky porn in the bottom tab. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, it was good. I but know. I know that he was disappeared, and uh, and then I got paranoid. Is he disappeared now? Yeah. Well, they started doing it to other people too. They yeah, shut social media. Even they know. kick you off Facebook. They That's shut exactly your Twitter off. And they that, oh, he didn't get yeah. disappeared like his human. No, 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 no. He, didn't get, he didn't get taken out. He oh, just I got disappeared from existence on the internet and wow. iTunes and everywhere else. Yeah, it's crazy. That's I mean, whether or not you follow or like someone like that, it's fucking terrifying because they're coming for you next, person right. that thinks that you have a that point of view that's acceptable and liberal and whatever. And a lot of people are laughing at that guy because don't they laugh. don't like his point of view. Don't laugh. That's what we're trying to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, because dude, guess it's, what? This it's fourth terrifying. Amendment, this fourth amendment, this terrifying. right? Luke and I talked about this last night. We never thought in a million years we were going to go there. Oh, my God. But I can't I, believe we are now. <laughs> but this fourth, this fourth Amendment right to, to technology, to me, is going to be the key to the Supreme Court for the next 10 or 15 years. We have to figure out, as a country, what the extent of technology abuse we're going to allow for our civil liberties. And the sad part is, who's on the Supreme Court? is really going to decide that issue. You know, we just went through the stuff with Brett Kavanaugh. Everybody's worried about the abortion stuff. That's kind of bullshit because no one's going to change that. That's just another tactic of the left. But you know what the real issue is that nobody talked about in his confirmation? is about this Fourth Amendment right. And if you go back and look at his confirmation hearings, do you know that he brought it up 
three times. What is the Fourth Amendment? I the, should know the Fourth this, Amendment. Course, the Fourth Amendment, right? Is you should ask those questions. Mind. The yeah. Fourth <laughs> Amendment. <laughs> You're welcome. I was waiting for someone else to say. I was like, oh, the Fourth Amendment. Yeah, yeah. For oh, the yeah. Really bad. The Fourth Amendment. None of us knew what it is. <laughs> I know. I know one, and I know two. And those are those are pretty important. Bang. You know, That's the, so the funny. Fourth Amendment it actually ties to privacy of the the individual. Uh, in, okay. in the United States. So data privacy and things like that? Everything. Uh, all okay. kinds of privacy. And it turns okay. out that we now have cases in the United States because of technology. Like all the things that you guys know, like Facebook released uh, data, LinkedIn did it, Google's done it. And this just keep happening. And you guys have seen how they try to march all these leaders up. Well, the federal government now doesn't really have good case law to actually decide what to do about these things. Like when there's a breach, do you have an ability, Luke, to go back and say anything? Right now you can't really do anything to Facebook. Right. Why? Because when you sign up, you sign those rights away. Yeah. Well, that's not the way the Constitution's written. And the thing is, this is one of those topics that's near and dear to my heart because I think, you know, like you said before, you're afraid of 5G. I'm going to tell you, all of us, whether you're left or right leaning, you need to be a big fan of what's going to happen on the Fourth Amendment. Like if Ruth, Gator, Ruth Bader Ginsburg does croak and die and we get another, the number one thing that I want to know as a voter, what's the next justice think about the Fourth Amendment? Because you know what? That's truly what's going to affect us. It's not about abortion. That's, that's settled law. It's going to be very hard to change. Oh, that. no one's doing anything with abortion, and that's what I I agree with and you even on. Even if that they too. do, it's not. But guess what? We, because yeah. we're drowning out people, we mm. don't hear about the issues that actually affect all of us that are watching this right now. Right. Have you thought or heard of the idea that we're kind of human race is kind of like a caterpillar? And we're kind of sucking up resources right now. And eventually we're going to kind of go into the chrysalis or maybe like L.A. is the chrysalis. And then we turn into like the mushy goo and die and then transform into like a technological butterfly. Oh, God. <laughs> that's, that's, Somebody had to ask no. it. That, that's, that's a lot of transhumanist. Stuff. I don't like that but, stuff, but man. I'm going I'm, I'm to be honest with I'm you. I'm a fucking human and I'm staying one. I'm well, just asking. I, I think that evolution is ongoing right now within our species. But. I will tell you, um, I don't think it's that as bad as you paint the picture. Do I believe, however, that there's cognitive de-evolution ongoing right now? Absolutely. Mm. I, I, think yeah. the, I think the current events that I showed today in my talk, that's pretty hardcore. I mean, even if you're a total skeptic. The celebrity suicides? Well, it's not only celebrity suicides, but the number one thing that I really wanted to reach people with is when I put the slide up that showed that the number one cause of death in 15 to 25-year-olds no longer is traffic accidents and accidents. It's suicide. Mm -hmm. And I got news yeah. here. In my medical career, never in a million years would I thought that that would change, and that's now changed. Wow. And this is, this is one of the realities. You know, we got... We got a couple of young millennials here, even actually younger than millennials. Yeah, what's the generation? Millennials, you guys actually, are millennials actually pretty old. You guys are Generation Z? That's yeah. gangster. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh. I named Matt's episode on my show the biohacking millennial, and yeah. then afterward people are like, uh, he's not a millennial. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's good marketing. I'm sticking what is with it. it? <laughs> it's, it's like older than you think. It's like 39 or it's like 40 or something really like that. is it I really so oh. yeah it's pretty it's it's like so a big gap for some reason yeah tech, well i don't I, i'm a baby boomer i'm the he, i'm the last year of the baby boomer mm. oh really i think so maddie is he not a millennial because he's not sensitive to criticism <laughs> millennials uh, good you, point. you criticize them they yeah. jump off a fucking bridge yeah, you don't like my shoes <laughs> <Maddie's pretty laughs> <pretty grounded. laughs> <laughs> Bunch of snowflakes. <laughs> I'm serious. Snowflake. I'm serious. I can't believe how sensitive people are. I think that's how we're de-evolving is through political correctness and everyone becoming I, so fucking sensitive that they're losing their emotional resilience. But that's why I tell you that makes me a little bit different on social media because you guys know that I can be pretty damn aggressive. It's true. <laughs> and, and I want that you even know, toward people you like like me. <laughs> no, but I, 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 really, I really want to put people – in chaos to see how they react because guess what if they react badly those are people that i don't want in my network 
like you said earlier tonight, hey, man, I got, I got a good network. I'm solid. Well, the, the thing is, how do you call your network? How do you get a good network? There's probably a lot of people out there right now that are going, yeah, h- how do I know who's in my circle of five? And when someone's in my circle of five, how do I make a decision to keep that person in or keep that person out? Because, you know, sometimes that person may be really important in your family or your social network. How do you let them in and how do you let them out? That's why I always tell people my circle of five is constantly in evolution. Nothing is ever solid for too long. Circle of five meaning your inner circle of yeah, the those of people are, those you are talk the people. to most. I always tell people if you meet the, the top five people in someone else's life, you can learn way more about that person than you can ever learn yeah, sitting absolutely. down and talking to them. That's I think this good. gets I think that gets people into trouble sometimes as well, especially living in Los Angeles, because we'll become so attached to having the best of the best in our circle. Like Los Angeles people are notorious for always like looking over their shoulder that you almost have like nobody in your circle because you're always seeking someone better. Better? Yeah. It's sounds pretty like fucked up. Kim Los Angeles is a lonely place. Well it sounds like the, the Kim Kardashian effect. I mean to me that is actually a low dopamine behavior. Right. So it doesn't surprise mm. me at all that you say that. Uh, I, I've noticed in different parts of the country, it's completely different. Yep. And that's why I said I think there's a huge disconnect in our country. The point that I'm trying to make to all of you that I'd like you to take back to your old podcast and your audiences, I think the disconnect in the United States in zip codes is tied to how 5G is being deployed. Hmm. That's what I'm telling you. Can you paint? the picture of exactly what that is i can but i'm not going to do it on a public podcast because i could probably get some people in trouble because i happen to know where things are and they completely marry up to where if you look at where voting totals come in they match up pretty clearly i personally think the last election cycle both the midterms and the presidential election before they were contrived and there was things that were done that were nefarious but not by the people that you, Luke, me, or Matt would normally think. I think this was done by design, and what they're trying to do is they're stress testing the system to see just how much control they have. What can you see? You literally, how do you call it, crack, cut people's skulls open and look at their brains? Cut or crack. Crack. Yeah. Let's get <laughs> first so of all when but coconut and coconut. Crack and the coconut. Yeah. Crack the coconut. So he he's a brain surgeon. Do you know what music he listens to when he does <laughs> surgery? He yeah, listens to Pantera. Cool, dude. He listens Have to you Pantera. I'm like, no motherfucker is cutting my head open listening to Pantera and Slayer. Like that can't be good. <laughs> Have you heard the, the effect it's the true. Eff- have you heard the the effect that that um, doctors can have on unconscious patients? Absolutely, that's pretty interesting. Well, that's why he I always puts his hand on their heads before I he. Does I know. I remember you told me that. I, did, I, I did. just heard yeah. that on your podcast. Yeah, I was right. To, that's <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I remember that. Actually, before I operate on anybody, <laughs> the, the part that I usually uh, am going to cut on, I actually will sample it. And I started doing this before I was into all the quantum biology. It was just something. That I did. I never knew why I did it, and I think it's. What do you mean, sample it? Me- meaning you're, that exactly what I'm doing. If I touch you on yeah. your bare skin, yeah. I'm feeling your biophotons. I'm uh, actually okay. sampling, you know, what's going on, and what that allows me to do as the surgeon, I'm connecting with your energy source. Oh, cool. And mm-hmm. when I physically do the operation, I believe in some way, and I don't understand how it actually works, but it makes a difference, and I always do it. And I did it before, you know, even I was connected to all this quantum biology stuff, and I never understood why I did it, but I was always compelled to do it. And I I would always talk to the patients right before they went to sleep, you know, and I I would tell them, I'm going to tell you what we're going to listen to. You know, and I had (laughs) playlists played out, and people would be like, and they they were actually into it. And they were interested oh. why I wanted to listen to what I wanted to listen to. It turned out for different operations that I do, I have different playlists that I listen really? to. Really? Yes. What, do you have anything that's uh, less um, aggressive? And <laughs> yeah. Like if I do a carpal you know, tunnel, I'll, I do. I'll listen to Sting. <laughs> Shape of my heart. I like that. Really? So, I swear to God. You say if you do a carpal tunnel? Yeah. 
You're a brain surgeon? Yeah. Well, carpal tunnel? Yeah, we do carpal tunnels. We do all peripheral nerves. Oh, Any, I had no uh, idea. We operate Neuro. on brain, spine, and peripheral nervous system. Oh, interesting. Any nerve is a peripheral nerve. I want to go back in time. Okay, <laughs> you're, you're in med school or you, or you just get your credentials and you're doing your first operation. I mean, is there any point where you take some, you know, saw or crack somebody's skull open and look at their brain and, like, want to throw up or freak out or get sweaty or cry or I freak never, out? I never had that issue. Um, I mean, I just can't. I don't want to see inside I, someone's head. It totally freaks yeah, me out. Yeah, you say that, but I'm going to tell you, most people, like 95% of people really get into it. Like, if you saw Jeez. brain surgery, you'd be like, it's so fascinating when you see it the first time. Um, there's very few people that really, even in medical school, really pass out. They do pass out with other surgeries. Um, but brain surgery is a little bit different. And even among seasoned surgeons when we open a coconut other people come in like it's the last brain tumor that i i did really yeah i it was a pretty horny brain tumor um it was a, along the sagittal sinus so this is one that you could kill somebody pretty quick so we had a lot of people in the room and there was a lot of anatomy laid out so people wanted to see like where the corpus callosum was where this was where's that because these are things you normally don't see in the surgery and a lot of people came in, and these are seasoned people, and they're like, "This is cool as shit." Mm. You know, and I wow. used to—I'll wow. say to them all the time. I, you know, it's like Beavis and Butthead. Brain surgery is cool, <laughs> <laughs> <Have you? laughs> but it doesn't affect me because when you're in the moment, like when you're the guy doing the cutting, you are so focused. When I tell you, if you, you know how, like, you know, people used to talk a couple years ago about flow states. If you ever wanted to see Jack Cruz in a fucking flow state. It's when I'm doing surgery. Like that. Dude, I am completely, it's almost an out-of-body experience for me. I, 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 I've I never experienced that experience any time in my real life. But when I'm there, it's almost like time stops for me. And it's kind of like. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly how it's going to go. And everything, it's its almost like artist strokes, doing what you have to do to get out as fast as you can to make sure that the patient's okay. And I've never actually talked to anybody about kind of what's going through my mind when I do it. But um, it's its its really almost a fugue state. Hmm. It truly is. Wow, that's fascinating. That's why you don't want to quit, right? I, you know, I I. I I don't think that's the reason why I don't want to quit. I think the reason I don't want to quit is because maybe I have the false belief that I don't think a lot of other people are out there doing what I'm doing for people in neurosurgery, using quantum biology and trying to help them get better. And I've had some pretty big wins. Like I can take really bad problems and help people out that, you know, I told you the story. I had a lady come in not that long ago that said, uh, another surgeon operated on her five times, and she was on huge amount of medicines. And she said, "Look, if if you can't help me, I think I'm going to kill myself." Well, and, you know, you know, you guys hear stories like this, you know, on the media, but I don't think any of you ever had somebody come in and actually physically really tell you that. And when that happens, that's when you start to realize what my job is all about. That's when it gets as fucking real as a heart attack. Okay, and that's when you realize you have an ability or a disability to harm or help that patient and you you have to be brutally honest with that person can you harm or help them and tell them the truth so when you guys see me on social media and we talk about say magnesium chloride or for me you see how easy it is for me to answer you yay or nay the reason why that comes from those decisions in neurosurgery and for me, it's an easy decision process. If I think it's going to help you, I'm going to tell you. If I don't, I'm going to tell you that as well. If I'm pretty definitive on it, I can tell you that I've thought about it and I have some data to back it up. Um, but there's nothing. There's nothing. This is the best thing about medicine. There's nothing like connecting with a patient on that level. And when you know and you tell a person that they're hurting, and that you can operate on them, and you know that you're going to help them, you just get this little smirk on your face like, I got this. And then they're scared as fuck. They go to sleep and they wake up, and they're better. Dude, 
that's why you signed up to do this. That's cool. And, and you know what? You can't get that in anything else that I know. But, and that's one of the things that makes surgery a dopamine addiction for a lot of guys because guess what? You can actually really help someone. The problem is you can also fuck it up pretty bad. Yeah. You know, yeah. especially if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what the limits of your ability are or the limits of what your patient's willing to do to help you get better. Because oftentimes with surgery, the patient has to have skin in the game. They have to be willing to do some of the things that need to be done. And not everybody's willing to do that. I'm curious. Can you or, oh, or go on. I can't this is a quick one. Can you or have you operate on someone's brain while they're completely awake and yes. not under yeah. anesthesia? Many yeah? times. Yeah. And so they're chilling, looking at you, oh, yeah. looking up at you, and the top of their yeah. head is fucking open, and you're digging around in there? Mm -hmm. So you just do is local anesthesia around the cut? Yeah. You both, what you is it true is that you don't have nerves in your brain? Like, yeah, if you, well, you, if you, you have my skull open and you tapped on it, I wouldn't get the sensation right. of my, the skin being touched on no. my brain. Or you or whatever. No. Oh, wow. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you have a sense of um, where memories exist? Yeah, in water. Hmm. Just did a Patreon blog on it. I suggest you join my Patreon. <laughs> 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 but it's a great blog. I will tell you, it's one of the best blogs that I've written in a long time. Mm. The water memory blog is, is phenomenal. Can we talk about it here at all? Yeah. The Ask. water in your brain? Yeah, the water everywhere in your body. Do you is, know this that like, water? is this like a Moto kind of kind of no, stuff, like water it's, crystals? it's way deeper than a Moto. Moto is kind of what I call surface, surface kind of stuff. Okay. All right. So cool. What, cool. What, We're I, what I was saying before is that <clears throat> water touches every square surface area of every protein in your body. The number one protein in your body is collagen. So water does have a memory. The memory is tied to topology. What is topology? It's the study of size and shape changes. Hmm. So it turns out when light hits water, it changes the size and shape of the hydrogen bonding networks that surround each protein. That information is transmitted to the protein and back. It's a bi-directional device. So memory is coded for in water. So most people <clears throat> think that memory is coded for in the central nervous system, like in the brain or in parts of the brain. But you happen to be talking to a neurosurgeon who's taken large parts of people's brains out, and it doesn't affect their memory at all. Yeah. Wow. Have you heard the the idea that's almost like memories and past experiences are almost like it's like a fractal in various like your whole existence exists in Nature, every part of the brain. Nature's a fractal, Aaron. Yeah. I mean, we talked earlier today about Jackson Pollock. You know, I gave Luke and one of the other members for Neil the idea of exactly you know because you always hear people talk about dopamine, but they really don't break it down for you so you understand it. People who are depressed who are going to kill themselves or who are fat or do drugs. Those are low dopamine people. Those are the ones we always talk about. But you know who we never talk about? The people with high dopamine who have the high spikes. Who are those people? Those are the people with schizophrenia. Hmm. Still a mental right. disease. So the point that I'm trying to make to you, it's not that all mental disease is low dopamine. Most of them are. But some of them are high dopamine. Then there's the part in the middle, which is the Jackson Pollock guys. He painted in fractals. Why? Because when dopamine is not optimized, you see the world, instead of being smooth like it is right now, you see it in, in still shots. Yeah. That's what the fractal nature is, and that's actually tied to the light that we use to do this. It's, it's a dopamine effect tied to UVA light. Who is the artist that their eyes were off, but it's what allowed them to paint the way that they did because they perceived the world. Van Gogh. Yeah, but there's was it Van Gogh? Yeah, well, there's many. And then when he found out. After he got his cataract shot, yeah. right? There's Didn't many. Did he not want to get him removed, though, because right. he thought it would affect his well, artistic There's many artists eye. that have this issue. It's not just one. There's many. So huh. I am interested in kind of moving into something a little different. Um, we were talking that. about the body electric earlier on and this kind of thing, and I'm interested to ask you, Jack, is it possible, I have this little theory that all of the benefits or some of the benefits that Aaron ex experiences because he's all into movement, right? It's very cool, and I'm wondering how does this tie into the into your thesis? How does all the movement have such a positive impact? Because obviously you're out in the sun, you're in the ocean, you're doing all that stuff, grounding on the beach in the ocean. But is it possible that specifically all the piezoelectricity from what it, 
what Becker oh, yeah. uh, researched is what movement, movement does mo- in our body to look. stimulate the DC current, or how does that work? Movement, <laughs> movement is fundamentally a biophysical phenomenon, um, and we don't think about it like that. The neocortex, it's completely wired for us to act, but the thing is you need to have sensory input to do that. It's a bidirectional device. The more you move, the more BDNF that you get in your brain what is brain derived nerve growth factor factor. it's actually fertilizer for the brain now too much bdnf is not good either because you have to trim it you know you have to make sure that there's not too much present but movement is another tool that one can use to stimulate and develop your central and peripheral nervous system what's interesting with with movement which i bet you have something to chill with this but i'm not sure but um you see different people's personality manifest through the way that they move. And so, you know, you'll see like um, like a CrossFitter person has a, a very specific personality versus like a ballet person or a West African what dancer or a martial patterns, artist. Man, I'm very curious. <laughs> oh, man. What did um, you say? I'm, I'm, I, I like the way you slipped that in there. I don't Because this is going to be a pretty I don't controversial. Know if, I don't know if I have a, I have a, re- a response that I'm. Why? Um, hmm. That that would be a better question. I think that the tell us tell us what your your first impression is. Okay, um, if I were to look at just from the movement perspective, I think it's good. Okay. Yeah, I try to say now stay pers- in like the what, positive what end of, of things. What other perspective is there for you? Mm, I don't know that I would feel completely comfortable speaking about it here. Um, from a movement perspective, what I've seen so far, I think it's 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 good stuff, um, and I've seen from. The, the guy himself, um, Naudi, um, I've seen like an interesting evolution of his personality. Yeah. And I, I wonder what that is. Good. Because you know what? Y- you've already said enough for me because your perception and my perception are equivalent. Mm. I personally don't believe you can be good at movement when you have a toxic personality. Yeah, I wonder what it is. Like I have nothing but love for him and any 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 person – you know, really, whatever it sounds like, some new age. I shit, don't have love for people that that are toxic. I, I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. I call a spade a spade on that. But well, I, I see, I, I see, I, I still see think hurt. you can do good things yeah. in the movement world, as he appears to be doing. But there's something clearly disconnected there. Yeah, I just see. Um, anytime I see anything like that aside, just any being that is seems to be. Whatever fill in the blank thing like some distasteful attribute that I don't I like like irks me triggers me mm-hmm. I just immediately see pain, and I see the person dealing with that the best that they can, um, you know so, yeah that's that's. What do you think about that, Jack? About I'm very curious because I've, through various studies, have come to believe a similar thing that when people are assholes, usually it just means they're actually, really in pain of some sort and they're yeah, having they're trouble dealing. They've been with injured. It. Yeah, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that? I don't. I I think I think that can be accurate most of the time. I don't know. I think there's some people that are pretty crafty that actually know how to use that to get responses out of people. Like I I can tell. I can tell you right now. I use. I perturb people on purpose to make them uncomfortable because I want to see how they think. That's different, though. I think. Well, no, maybe it's not different. Actually, yeah, it could be different. I think it can be different, and I think it depends how you use it. Mm. Um, I think if it's a, if it's a dominant theme throughout your personality, mean all the time. It's not just a social media phenomenon. Because I think the other thing that people need to understand your social media persona from your persona in real life, when it's disconnected, that's when I think you can start to see how people use this to their advantage. I I personally want to know how people think immediately right off the bat. Why? Because that's going to tell me a lot about them, whether I want to invest time in them, whether I want to sit down and talk to them, whether I want to answer their questions or not. You know, and, and the thing is, I don't want I, I always if you look at my Instagram page, especially, I have so many posts about toxic people. I think if someone is truly toxic, you need to get rid of them in your life because I don't think you can heal and do well long term. 
Oh, hell no. I, the, my, my perspective on this is like, is I see an injured person, I see someone that's been hurt, and that's why they're hurting other people and why they're triggered and fucking with people online and all that. I know that because I was a person who was hurt a lot as a kid, and right. I used to hurt a lot of other people as a reaction to that. But I take no shit. You would like blocking people? I always say block and bless, man. Someone yeah, does block one little, and bless, baby. One right. little fucking negative comment, you're blocked. I don't want to talk about it. I'm not answering. I'm not going to argue and engage and drop down to that level. I'm just like, oh, you're done. You're done. You're done. <laughs> That's the way. Oh, yeah. You're just you're out of my this life is the way. forever. That's the answer. But I, media but see, I, so, can I ask but I don't do a question? It, but I don't do it with if resentment you, or hostility. I mean, I'm not joking. Somebody right. on social media, do you block them in life? Oh fuck yeah! Oh for yeah. sure, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I don't, so I don't. My around. my love is is, is yeah. It's like I love them, love. but I don't it's like love them. From afar. <laughs> you see what, what I'm about saying, you, Matt? If you block somebody, do you block them? In I'm real getting life? new to this thing, but uh, <laughs> I haven't really had an experience where I've blocked. Yes, I've I've done that. I mean, there are people who have mostly low dopamine people from high school who have like I posted something <laughs> and then they're like oh my like god this. oh my god this is so offensive <laughs> and then I'm just like alright I don't really I'm need interested. to talk I'm to this person I'm ever again this. Like, I'm interested in this topic because yeah, it's great. I, I told Luke that I think social media block is the best thing ever <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not yeah. kidding you yeah, no, I've I've blocked people and I they'll you know comment or s- message me like that's so offensive because they're part of that liberal communist ideology where they need to control what you think and they're not comfortable enough with maybe their own ideology where I I don't know if this is right or not but they actually want to control other people's thinking and they want to oh there's control. a lot of that yeah you know what I'm getting yeah. at basically but so I when think that social, comes around I, I just block media and I'm just, created I don't need a to talk huge with them. problem for all of us because there's people that sit behind a keyboard now. And they th- they think this gives them some kind of power, and I- I'm just <laughs> because amazed. they lack power in other aspects of yeah. their life. That's the only reason they would feed any energy yeah, into that no because they have enough bandwidth. It. Yeah, and I mean it's just which means it's even more reason to be like, okay, well, block why am bless. I dealing with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> just move right you know, along. Block and <laughs> You're not going move anywhere. Move right along, <laughs> 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 It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I that was interesting. But so back to BDNF and movement and how it affects the biophysics stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Aaron, you mentioned that when people sit, you have seen some evidence and studies that show that their tissue, connective tissue, begins to m- look more like scar tissue and so on and mm. hardens. And that stuck with me because yeah, I sit a that. lot. But I think based on Jack's thesis that maybe the fact that I'm in sunlight all the time or literally all the time, and if I'm not, I'm in the shade but still outdoors, barefoot, grounded, y- usually in a good spot, not on top of electricity, getting in the ocean and so on, that maybe – my tissues wouldn't be hardening for, because I have the DC current flowing through, keeping all my connective tissue, collagen, and so on functional. Um, but if I were in blue light all day, that, that would be oh, the I'm effect. Gonna, so what I'm going to tell you, gonna tell you the that, biophysics. Jack? I'm going to tell you the biophysics part of this. I don't agree with Aaron's perspective <laughs> for this reason. <laughs> it's not my perspective. But it's just, just shit that I read. Right. This is, this is what I don't I have believe. any perspectives on I this. believe that the interaction between light and water actually determines this. From my answer, the reason why is because water is an ele- is an electromagnetic capacitor. So if you are in the sun, you're always going to be a better mover than if you're not. Now I think if you're in blue light, I think then I think Aaron's correct, but I don't think it's a, a, a an all equals one. You know I think there's a lot of variation here, and I do believe that people that are in good light are always going to be better movers. That's part of the reason why you know. Jeremy, my good friend, he climbs everywhere in the world in bright sun, connected all four limbs to the rocks. To me, that's the key. That's the reason why I told you earlier today that I'm a big fan of MoveNet. You know, I'm not a big fan of a lot of people in the functional uh, patterns thing because most of them are doing it indoors. Mm. To me, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's part of the reason why I don't like any kind of stuff done inside when you move. I don't think it's a great idea. I mean, in fact, I'm going to tell you something. I almost said it today, and I, I just kept my mouth shut. People talk about meditation. It wasn't you that said it, but it was, you know, we're in the meeting. And I think if you do meditation inside in blue light, you're a fucking idiot. It's the stupidest thing I ever heard. I heard a guy today at the meeting downstairs say, well, every morning I get up and I meditate in my house, and I found that it's good for me. I'm like, that's not meditation, dude. That's that's like a mental illness. It doesn't make any sense to me for you to do something like that 
in under artificial light and think that you're getting a huge benefit. Well, Perhaps he's doing it without artificial light, though. I meditate. You, that's impossible, my friend, if you're inside. Oh, because of glass windows? Exactly right. Uh, that's See, we need to teach you about the, yeah, we gotta the, show spectroscope. You the spectroscope. When I show you the spectroscope, anybody who's inside, Aaron, even if it's sunny outside, is blue light toxic if you're inside? Hmm. Because the window blocks the purple, and it takes out about 40 to 60% of the red. So it doesn't have any effect on the blue. So technically, the blue on a relative basis is way more than the red. So right. you're blue light toxic just by being inside. Hmm. So guess what? That's we, nuts. Right, it is nuts because you don't yes. think about this. I never – I'm like, oh, I don't have any lights on in here. I'm getting natural light. This is great. Right, you don't think about this, but that's part of the reason, like, we have the light on right now, why this is kind of cool because, you know, there's bad stuff out here. But and we don't really have any blue light on in here right now. But the point is, we don't think about this. And we need to. We need to think if if we're gonna tell people we want you to go into a gym, make sure that the gym's got good lighting, or the opportunity for you to have outdoor light, because I think that's what movement really where it starts and where it begins for us. That's one thing that's outside. cool at the at the Onnit gym. They have that big, uh, gr you know, that like a garage door yeah. that opens. You know, so you get all this natural light and air in there. I thought that was cool. A lot of the gyms kind of have that, I guess. Now they're kind of they like take over an auto body shop and they have that big roll up door. Yeah, yeah. That's Deuce Gym does it here. The oh, really? Own the place. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. I that I would be much more likely to work out <laughs> in a gym like that than I. Right. I dude, if I go to one of those. Equinox, one of these fancy yeah. gyms with that fucking LED lighting, yes. it scrambles my brain. I can't right. even think. I don't. I don't understand. And the music, I, yeah, the fucking rap Gold's and techno and well. stuff. I'm like, dude, I, I gotta get out of here. I can't take it. Yeah, Gold's is the. I, I spend ninety eight percent of the time. There's like an outdoor area there, and Gold's in Venice as well. It's a better way to do yeah, it. Yeah, so it's crazy. On the yeah. note of working out and building up your muscles, I don't do that at all. Mm -hmm. I haven't lifted a weight in. I, since I was going to the YMCA with my friends in like eighth grade a long time ago, I will only maybe surf. Nah, that was only two years ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I was about five or six. Yeah. But um, so basically just from after, after learning about the stuff you've taught and applying it, I've been sort of just following my intuition and have not had any sort of pull to go and try to jack up my muscles. And I learned from you that – at least in your case, you're focused on your brain and your heart mitochondria mm -hmm. and not on optimizing, let's say, the facade, mm -hmm. trying to lose the last bit of weight you could lose, uh, you know, beefing up your muscles because you'd be stealing basically, let's say, DC electricity or energy from the brain and the heart because mm -hmm. you're displacing mitochondria to make the muscles bigger. So I'm curious, in my case, I mean, I don't, like, functionally, it might help with let's say just looking a little beefier, stronger, whatever, let's say for girls, women, whatever, that kind of thing. But, again, I don't even think that's really that big I, of a deal. I think, I think the story is, is more – I think it's – this is a very good topic because I think it's very counterintuitive for most people. There's several – I think most people have this belief that if you look like Michelangelo's Adonis – let me adjust that. There you go. <laughs> if, if you look like Michelangelo's Adonis at 70, 80, and 90 years old, that you're somehow healthier. So I make the claim to people who actually say that to me in questions and answers or in talks that I give, say, okay, can you tell me any time in human history where we actually looked like that at 70, 80, and 90 years old? And it turns out those people are extremely rare. I told um, Luke today, when we were in the hot tub, Neil Barzai has a group of super centenarians. These are people that are 110 years older. They're old, fat Jewish guys with BMIs of 30. So the reason why this is a great question is because our paradigm of belief is, well, we should look like this. As we age, that means we're healthy, yet we have no representation. It's kind of like models in vogue that look like heroin addicts. Why do we want women to look like this? Yeah. Because it because That's it's interesting because me, it's in a magazine. Well, I think the same thing is going on with muscles, and I don't want to make this um, a discussion about facades. I actually want to bring it to the biophysics. Do you know why 
humans get sarcopenia normally as they get older. What is sarcopenia? Sarcopenia is when you lose muscle mass and you get more fat. You do it because your mitochondrial colony is failing as you age. It goes up every 10%. Turns the heteroplasmy out, rate, right? Yeah. Yes. Current, turns out that carrying muscle mass is an expense. I'm stoked then. No, but I mean, it's an yeah. expense. And the thing is, we see people who are ripped up all the time die. Why is that if they're healthy? I mean, like just NFL happened. players you're talking about. Uh, NFL players, their their life life is shortened. But we have fitness guys that look like Adonis that drop dead of heart attacks. We what about those? have a lot of, like, fat, slob, disgusting people that do as well. Well, that's it's, it's the middle ground that's really, like, you can say that with, like, telomere length. Like, the people that are, that yeah. are excessive. I, I think telomeres are, are really a bad well, you'll probably like what maybe it's just a metaphor. I think most of these things are just like, you know, whatever. but uh, people that are excessively exercising, like maybe like a CrossFit community or whatever. I think CrossFit with anything, you can be balanced with any dogma. Um, but from the telomere perspective, which I'd be curious your thoughts on it, they'll see that is quite deleterious to the health of the telomeres. And then the same thing with being completely sedentary. So within that, it's like the middle well, path is me, the one that's the Let me give best. you the flip side to that argument because, you know, now I'm trying to be provocative with you. Please. Because we think that short telomeres are a problem and people have on Earth. What did we find out about the astronauts that went up to ISS? Scott Kelly came back with longer telomeres, and it made no sense because he had a hypermethylated genome and he was actually sicker. So what does that tell you? If you really think about what you said, mm. you may be right about people that are on the surface that shorter telomeres lead to bad outcomes and bad longevity. But what it tells me, Scott, Kelly faced up there is that he had the full electromagnetic spectrum up there and he came back with wildly different results hmm. that tells me that when we change the electromagnetic environment on the surface that we truly don't know the answer the thing that I'm going to tell you is that carrying around skeletal muscle that's bulky as you get older when your colony is failing is a huge expense I'm not saying you can't do it I think it's possible to do but I'm saying the days of us being able to do that are rapidly going away because we're now elevating the blue light and the 5G. I think Western A prices guys that I always like to talk yeah, about. Yeah, that's my what I was going to ask about. Those guys were old as hell looking. Those, and they were Those ripped. indigenous hunter-gatherer yeah, guys. Those, that picture from 1927. There right. was no freaking blue light, and those guys were living outside. Right. That's How long were those guys living with their straight teeth and... Uh, uh, muscular bodies. Well, that, that picture that he showed, one was 55, the other guy was 75, and the other guy was like 82. Oh. And they were all in a family together, and they all looked phenomenally and ripped. I think back then, I think in our human history, I think Matt's point, it was very possible and likely to happen, but I don't think any of us live that way anymore. And now we have... Daniel Vitalis, maybe. Well, we but we I think I mean I'm talking about living as like a hunter gatherer right. in the wild, you know that kind but, of thing. But but look at even the Hasda, we or the Maasai, they they still live pretty wild. They're probably the most wild people outside of maybe some of the people in the Amazon. Mm -hmm. But when we go see those people today, they still don't look like that picture oh. that people have. Maybe those guy, those three guys were like the hut builders of the tribe or something. <laughs> They're lifting heavy shit all day. I, you know those guys, the, the three Af the African or you know dark skinned guys. Where I don't know where they no, were they from. Were, they, no, they were actually uh, Aboriginals oh, okay. from the middle of the bush in Australia. They, yeah. Oh, okay. And, and this picture was amazing. It's one of the most amazing pictures. In yeah, that I know book. Cool. I know what you guys are talking about. Yeah. Even though I've never read that book or don't know much that, about Western Well, ev Price. everybody needs to read that book. But the point What's that the I'm trying called? to make is why I think that that is never going to happen again is for the same reason I don't believe in calorie restriction is ever going to work because I think the electromagnetic environment has changed so tremendously that it's now physically impossible for that to occur. Mm -hmm. Now, do I believe that was the case in a previous part of Earth's history? No, I don't. Does that mean if we decide at some point to turn off how we're using technology that we couldn't go back to that? No, I don't. Uh, I mentioned to you guys, uh, especially Elliot, we talked about Jean Calmet today. She lived to 122.4 years old. You know, she didn't look like, you know, the female version of Adonis either, but she lived longer than anybody else. 
In fact, she did some things that most people would scratch their head and go, you got to be kidding me. She drank red wine every day. She ate dark chocolate. She lived in the south of France. Did she smoke cigarettes and as she well? She smoked cigarettes, and she quit when she was 100 years old. Do you know why she quit? God damn it. Mm. I want that she life. She went blind. She couldn't light her cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> but yet she lived 22.4 more Spain years. Spain has, like, the longest uh, longevity. That sounds redundant. And they're, like, cigarette smoking, top of eating, alcohol drinking, community focused people mm-hmm. what's with this blue zone shit the blue zone stuff has actually been blown out the water dan butner it's fake ass no it's not fake ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it, it's now reverse like people you know we always talk about the okinawans <laughs> yeah they had great longevity yeah. in, in one the genera- Inuits, uh, you know right. well in one generation now it's flipped their longevity is no oh. longer so great Guess why? So blue zones were real, but now well they're, they're changing it. And the point is, it goes <laughs> <laughs> it, it goes to what Matt and you guys are bringing up is that look, we don't realize as modern humans how much we're changing things. And the thing is, I think the ultimate outcome of what can happen is going to change. Yeah. Yeah. See, with all with the stuff you're talking about, where we're you know we're devolving now, right? We can't see it because we're in the middle of it. Right. Like we're in the middle of it's this true. soup, and because if you're an outlier like you are, and you're like, dude, hello, wake up, and you have these predictions four or five years ago about blue light and the effects, and now it's coming to fruition. Now it's at the mainstream, and people on the periphery are at least going, oh wow, well, okay, we'll look into this. And in five years from now, we can only hope people go, oops, 5G, bad idea. But still, we're all in the middle of it, and we're kind of used to feeling the way we feel and looking the way we look and getting the illnesses we get. And it's like this has just become the new normal. It's like imagine if you went back and, you know, teleported from 1850 to right now and looked around and was like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. You have what disease? What is that? Right. You know, it's crazy. But it's difficult for us to see because we're just too close to it. It's like standing in front of the Mona Lisa and, with your eyes six inches from the goddamn canvas, it's like you can't see the full picture. And that, that I think, is very, very important. It's an important statement. That it's, it's one of the key things that when I talk, I don't think people realize that's actually what I'm saying. That's what makes technology really difficult for people to understand because we are so indebted to it. We're so in bed with it that it's now blinded literally. us. <laughs> We're to, literally in bed with it. But it's blinded us to the reality that it's changing our reality. Right. And, and that's, that's really the point that I'm trying to make to you. I think what is going to be considered healthy going forward is radically going to change. Like our definitions for it are going to change. And this, this is not acceptable to some people. They have a problem with this, you know. Um, I don't. I, I, to me, because it makes sense, as the environment changes, the art trajectory changes. You know, that's what evolution is really all about. And it doesn't mean that some in our, some in our clade couldn't go a different way than others. I actually believe that's actually happening. I need to go to sleep. <laughs> I got a question before yeah. we do that. Yeah, yeah. Why does breath work make you feel so awesome? I, if I do kundalini yoga, if I do Wim Hof, if I use my breath and my body... I feel so amazing. Why? I think it's because it affects your mitochondrial function. I mean, it's changing the redox power. Remember, what uh, oxygen does, it's at the end of your wire. So if you have more oxygen there, you pull more current across it. If you pull more current across it, as long as your cytochromes aren't trashed, you're going to feel better. If your cytochromes are trashed, you'll feel worse. That's part of the reason why I tell people I'm not a fan for everybody to have um, uh, hyperbarics. Because if you have trash cytochromes, hyperbaric oxygen is not good for you. And how do you find out if you have trash cytochromes? Well, you're usually <laughs> going to have some kind of mitochondrial disease. Oh, okay. You so, know, so, so for so example, if you have diabetes, okay. it, it's usually... So since I don't have any clinically diagnosable disease right now, my cytochromes are... No, I think yours probably are probably decent. okay. But the thing that I want you to pay attention to, mm-hmm. since you're in a 5G city now, you may be fine now at 48, but two years from now you may not realize that something else is going on. Right. You know, and then when you try it and you use it, you get worse. But look, I have an example of this in medicine. When people get ARDS, that's a, a really serious lung disease, they go from being well to in the ICU, literally deathly ill, and they can't breathe because their lungs are filling up with crap. 
what do we do? We increase their FiO2, which means that we're giving them more oxygen. As we give them more oxygen, you think they would get better? They actually get worse. And we can kill them through organ system failure. Why does that happen? Because as you raise oxygen, they make more ROS. More ROS leads to the organ failure. So this is the crazy thing about oxygen. We all think that oxygen is necessary. It turns out there are situations where oxygen can kill you. Wow. And people don't realize this. This is the reason why some of the alternative health guys out there can be extremely dangerous when they recommend, well, everybody should get HBO. Well, you know, one of the key things that you see out there, many people talk about HBO and kids with autism. Kids with autism have What's tr- HBO? HBO, hyperbaric oh, oh, oxygen. Oh, okay, okay. So, you know, if you go in a dive yeah. tank, the okay. thing is many people with autism get told, oh, you should have HBO. These kids get HBO and they get worse. And they start getting other problems. I thought you were talking about subscribing to Showtime. Yeah, me too. I was like, yeah, it's (laughs) the the blue light in the TV. (laughs) You've got to shut it off. What about uh, about, uh, ozone? What about ozone IVs? I mean, isn't there there proof of improving mitochondrial function? Yes, there is. Because I've been doing this shit for like a few weeks now. The proof is, I'm going to tell you, doesn't meet my clinical... I'm not a, I'm not a, a buyer. Do I believe it can help some people? The answer is yes. Do I think it's one of those therapies that the person that's prescribing it needs to know exactly what they're doing and the person that's getting it better have their eyes wide open? That's how I look at it. I think most of the people using it, um, Luke, from the medical perspective, I don't think they're educated enough to really know what they're doing. If you're not a true mitochondriac, Utilizing ozone can be a very dangerous procedure. Have you looked into uh, Frank Schallenberger's stuff? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Are you on? Are you think he's on point? I mean, that's kind of where I, I'm going to for yeah. information on I, this. I, I think a lot of the things that he has is good. You know what my problem with him is? I don't think he understands mitochondria very well. Mm. And that's my problem. My problem is I think most of the work that he's done is on people that have decent redoxes. But what happens when you don't? And you don't tell people this issue, and then they start using ozone and they get worse. What do you do then? I'm going to bow out and go home. You guys can continue this conversation. Oh, we can wrap it up. It's not going to be the same without we you. We have your gear as well. No, I don't. I'm coming back tomorrow morning. Oh, you are. So we can give your gear back. Yeah, I just got to. I got to wake up in the morning and do. Uh, you guys can seriously keep going. I just got to wake up in the morning and lead a fucking class. So I got to like be yeah. sh- be s- be all sprightly. Yeah, you do. <laughs> what, t- what time is it? <laughs> oh, shit, it's almost 11. Oh, my God. Last night, we were recording at, what, 1 o'clock? Go to 1. 12. Do your thing, no, no, man. No, we're not doing that. I'm getting on a this, plane this tomorrow. This podcast oh, you is, go. is uh, hazardous to your health. <laughs> we're a bunch of health <laughs> nuts sitting in a room. Like, we should be all goddamn <laughs> sleeping. I don't consider myself a health, health nut, for the record. Oh, I just, well, I'm going to include doing, you in, in my um, dogmatic <laughs> belief system. Um, <laughs> Maddie, so, you had a couple burning desires. I just though. have one question to ask Jack, but if you're gonna bow, because this might not be quick, um, okay. why don't I just let me leave this thing here and yeah. just because you, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys keep on going, and no, that's we're, fucking we're, cool. We're tapping out now because you just yeah. broke the vibe, dude. <laughs> whatever, it's like that whatever. Max song, one more question. Never break the chain. <laughs> <laughs> one more question. All right, so Jack, I'll make it quick. <laughs> um, I don't know how valuable this will be to the listeners, but I think it will be once they get the whole picture, and this will be a, a gold gem for them to go back to. So you said that ATP is not the main energy currency in cells. What it does is it unfolds proteins so they can be exposed to water. And then the ultimate energy currency, and this is proven by Gilbert Ling and the work of Pollock, is that sunlight shines on that water, creates a battery, and that provides energy. But how does that work? Like w- how does the energy – power the proteins and how does it flow through the water and then how does that make us actually alive and this is why sun's more important than food and why if you don't get sun food isn't going to make up for it but mm. how does it actually work the energy flowing well, through the water and powering the proteins solar and light hits water water is an electromagnetic capacitor because what does it do it has a high heat uh, capacity that means that it can absorb shit tons of of light once the light is in the water network, I want you to think about it as a battery in a car. It becomes able to use many different things. So the protein that has these side chains 
they get photonically activated. In other words, you're changing the spin state of electrons and protons. You're actually changing the spin state of photons that are buried in the water to do things that it can do. So the protein, remember, it has four different protein folding abilities. It's called primary, secondary, quaternary, and, and I should say tertiary and quaternary. The first two bends of proteins are controlled by DNA, the DNA code. Guess what the last two bends are controlled by? The redox power in the cell. So what's the redox power in the cell? The net negative charge, which is tied to the amount of light that's buried in the water. So the last two bends are the keys to the thermodynamics that are possible in a protein. So the light can change the shape shifting. That's actually how life becomes vital, how an abiotic atom becomes activated. Why? It's the level of energy in the system that controls it at the protein level. There we go. It's pretty interesting. I can't wait to re-listen to this. That's a mic drop right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know the cool thing is? He just asked me like a really fundamental question, like what is life? That's really what he asked me. Yeah. And, and, and that question has been asked to many, many people. My answer that I just gave him probably has 15 critical scientists that actually help me understand how the process really works. The, this did not, Jack Cruz did not come up with this. This was all other people who have studied this made me realize what the process really is about. And when you understand how the biophysical levers control this in a cell, that's when you really start to understand how we work. And that's the reason why you see Parkinson's and Alzheimer's with those last two bends and you get protein folding, you know, diseases. Huntington's disease is a disease like that too. That's a, a different one controlled by DNA, but it's effectively in there. ALS, I think, is an electromagnetic disease that's caused by the same process. Mm -hmm. This mechanism is built into many different diseases, but we don't seem to realize it. Um, so to me, I think it's kind of a good question to end on because it's one of those questions where you say, well, how do we learn about this? You have to read Roland Van Wick's book. You have to read Pollock's book. You have to Is read Gilbert Ling. One of the Gilbert Ling ones? was the guy that came up with the original idea, but his idea wasn't completely correct. In other words, there's other people that gave their other two cents. If you ask me, the guy that was the, the rocket scientist in all this was Albert St. Georgie. Uh -huh. if, if anybody has never read Albert St. George's work, especially you as a movement guy, you absolutely need to get in because this guy was fucking brilliant. I mean, he truly was brilliant. He's the guy that came out and, and said in 1941 in his Nobel lecture, he said, I think life works by semiconduction. And the dude was spot on. We didn't prove it until Becker, until almost 25 years later. Um. To me, he's one of the rock stars of the 20th century. That he's the Mil Keith Richards of uh, yeah. understanding <laughs> physiology. <laughs> well, but, and, we, and we never really talk about him, you know. Well, then he's not the Keith Richards. He's the he's the Ron Wood. He's the yeah. unsung hero. There you go. <laughs> he's the bass player. All right. Let's put it that way. All right. All well, right. Luke's story's got to go to bed. Luke's right. story. I guess we're all going to bed. Where do we? How do we end this? So we should probably maybe just point everywhere, and we. I don't know how we're going to release this. <laughs> I'll point across. Aaron I, has the we? line podcast. Yeah, I haven't listened go. to it too much, but the few episodes I have listened to are pretty good. Mm. And he's a cool dude, pretty tall, kind of handsome, and uh, he, uh, you know, does this movement thing, and apparently it works. Apparently, for. Sure. If we were people. downstairs, he goes, hey, want to go out in the hall and do some acro yoga? I was like, yeah, whatever the <laughs> fuck that is. Sure. I like yoga. That's we go out there. <laughs> Homeboy's got me suspended up in the air, like, <laughs> flooring me around like a rag doll. I'm 6'2", 185 pounds, dude, just, like, flinging me around. Did you say 285 pounds? No, what? 185. <laughs> 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 you just <laughs> you graded yourself an extra yeah, he's pounds. He's a movement master. <laughs> yeah. 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 He knows, he knows the body. I appreciate that. Yeah. Keep and on going. Keep Luke on. Luke has a podcast called The Lifestyle. Stylist podcast is very good. Uh, Dr. Cruz has been on there before. Aaron, I don't know if you've been he on has. there yet. You yeah. have. Yeah. I have myself as well. Yeah. 
And I don't uh, have a podcast. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty good. Jack doesn't have a podcast. He just cuts people's heads open. And my podcast isn't quite mine, but it's to be announced. Just uh, stay tuned, <laughs> mattmaruka.com. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about it <laughs> this week. With, Poor Matty. He's, yeah. got, he's got like six amazing episodes in the can, and he's like, I can't put them out, and I can't talk about it. All right, yeah. over and out. Thank right, you so guys. much for following along. We'll yeah. see how this one drifts out.